Welcome on in everybody. Today I've got the Blunderbuss and Rapier build for you guys. This is a weird build. It has great mobility and still surprisingly fantastic damage even though Blunderbuss Rapier is kind of a weird weapon mix. But yeah, it is interesting. It is definitely not something you see a lot of, but I found it pleasantly effective in PvP. I'm not going to say that it's the strongest build in the game, but it is the strongest Blunderbuss and Rapier build in the game. There you go. So this is a light armor damage build that does well in all different kinds of combat, but I think it definitely excels at more of the solo game because of that mobility that it has and the ability for it to get in and out of the fight very quickly. I've got a written guide to this build in the description down below on my website, pvpnewworld.com, if you guys want to check that out. And of course, there's a bunch of gameplay footage at the end of the video, so yeah, not only am I going to show you the build, we'll show you what it looks like in action. So without further ado, let's take a look at that build, guys. Starting off with the attribute points, a bit of a weird spread, but it works very well for this build, so let's get right into it. 50 strength. This is going to give us, of course, blunderbuss damage because blunderbuss will primarily scale from strength, but the 50 jump point is going to give us 10% bonus damage to melee physical basic attacks, which is a majority of the damage you do with rapier, your light attacks. So this actually helps out rapier quite a lot and does well for the blunderbuss. 150 dex, this is purely for the rapier. You do get the additional crit chance and you get the additional thrust damage, which is nice for some of the blunderbuss too. But the big reason I've gone with 150 dex is for that 10 less stamina cost on the dodge roll. For this build, Rapier hits very hard, and Blunderbuss surprisingly still hits really hard too, even though we've got the 150 in dex. So let's talk about the next part, Intelligence. We've got 163 intel, and any extra points you have, I would recommend putting them into Intelligence too. The big jump point is that 15% increase to elemental damage. This is big for the Rapier and the Blunderbuss, because both of them are converting a portion of their damage into elemental damage for this build. On top of it, we also get that 10% uh, backstab and random critical hit damage, which is going to be really nice for Rapier, seeing as it's already a fairly high critical uh, damage weapon in the first place, but this doesn't really help out Blunderbuss. And last but not least, 150 Constitution. You could go less if you want, you could go more, and uh, maybe take the 50 points out of Strength if you really wanted to, but 150 is kind of the sweet spot for PvP in Light Armor, I think. So yeah, we get some pretty decent damage on the Rapier, and the Blunderbuss is still hitting pretty hard with this build too. So let's take a look at the gear and see why it actually still does good damage. So, starting off with the Rapier, we've got the Augmented Electrified Gem on here, and we have the same one on the Blunderbuss as well, converting 40% of the weapon's damage to Lightning, and then also giving that uh, Lightning damage over time if you hit somebody with it. Now, if you want, you can have a different damage over time instead of lightning here, um, because if you have two lightnings, they don't stack with each other. But if you have like lightning and arcane and you hit once with the rapier and then swap to the blunderbuss and shoot, you will get both dots stacking. But for the interest of this build, I kind of just went all lightning for uh, it. So yeah, I think having arcane on the dot here would probably be a little bit better, but converting both damages to lightning I think works really well too. People are running really high thrust resist and really high uh, elemental resist slash fire resist in PvP, so you don't have a lot of good options for increasing blunderbuss damage in PvP. Um, you could go opal, but then you're all thrust damage and people are going to have that kind of resist. So yeah, I think making it lightning is the best way to go because lightning is a very unpopular damage type and a lot of people are just building fire resistance anyway instead of the other magic resists. And then when we take a look at the perks on the weapons, rogue, chain lightning, and keenly jagged on the rapier. There's a big reason why I like this rapier so much. Keenly Jagged and Chain Lightning are additional effects that are attached to your rapier. On top of it, you also get that damage over time from the Lightning Dot from the Augmented Electrified Gem. That pairs really well with Rapier's Controlled Breathing. This will give you 3 stamina on any hit, including those damage over time, or the Chain Perks, or an Attunement Perk. Ideally, you would actually want an Attunement Perk on the Rapier, but that's kind of my limitation going for Chain instead. And that just gives you a ton of additional stamina sustain on your build that you wouldn't normally have. So yeah, this in my opinion is the best rapier you could go for. Something that has attunement, keenly jagged, and then either rogue or vicious or whatever your preferred perk is. I like rogue and penetrating backstab the most. For the blunderbuss, I've got enchanted and keen speed. I would love to have maybe another perk on my blunderbuss, but I just didn't get lucky with any of my rolls on the blunderbuss, so this was the best one I got. I really like Enchanted, damage-wise it's fantastic. I would like an Augmented uh, perk here as well, um, maybe Augmented Lightning. 
And then keen speed is actually preferred. Um, the 20% haste that you get is super easy to proc the crit on because Blunderbuss shoots so many pellets. It has a pretty low crit rate, but because we have the 10% crit rate from our uh, dexterity and of course the 10% from the ring here too, the Blunderbuss is pretty much guaranteed to land at least one crit if all six pellets hit, and that will guarantee you the keen speed proc as long as it's not on cooldown. So yeah, I really like that there, but you could favor more damage, Keenly Empowered would work here too. Taking a look at the gear, now this is why I have gone for the whole lightning setup too. Every single one of the gems on here are electrified to increase my lightning damage by 2% each, so a total of 10% increased lightning damage from my gear, and then on my jewelry I have another 4.8% from the ring, could be 5 if I was... Uh, not so poor, but yeah, nice decent amount of lightning damage increase, almost 15% increase, and that is going to go a long way, especially on the rapier, because people are not building lightning resist, and elemental aversion will not reduce the lightning damage that your rapier does, so really nice for that reason. And then the gear itself, uh, a mix of resilient and uh, elemental aversion is definitely preferred. I do have a lot of freedom on here too. I think at least three freedom goes a really long way in PvP as well, but ideally it would be resilient, elemental aversion, and freedom. For the legs, of course, you definitely want to have shirking energy for the light armor build. Uh, yeah, I do have shirking heels as well on some of these pieces, um, but these are just the gear pieces that I had for this build to put it together. Ideally, again, resilient elemental aversion and freedom, or even resilient elemental aversion and shirking heals. But that is a very expensive piece that I will not be getting my hands on on the Iron Man probably ever, but I'll try. Moving on to the jewelry, we've got the Champion's Amulet. Of course, Stamina Recovery, Health, Shirking, Empower. One of, if not the best, PvP amulets for a Light Armor build. Um, you could have Divines instead of Shirking, Empower here as well, and that would be a little bit more defensive approach. Uh, both work really well. The Heart of Aelurus. This is a dropped ring that you can get from Brimstone Sands. It's very easy to farm, and this is, I think, the best in slot ring for this build. Lightning Damage, Hardy. And the Keen Awareness is not super huge for the Blunderbuss, outside of making it easier to proc Keen Speed, but it's really nice for the Rapier, especially when you're not getting those backstabs. Moving on to the Earring, Healthy Toast, Refreshing Toast, and I would go with Regenerating here if I did have it, but this is kind of my gear limitation at the moment. Healthy Toast and Refreshing Toast are definitely the most important ones that you want here. And of course, you got to run the best uh, supplies that you can. I've got Orichalcum cartridges. I would recommend these for PvP 100%. And then I've got health potions, regen potions, and mana elixirs to give us that additional healing from Healthy Toast. And for my ultimate, I've got the Cannon Heart Rune. Now, I played this build a bit, and I don't think Cannon is the best option for it. Cannon is a great Heart Rune, and I kind of like that when you use the Cannon, it reloads the Blunderbuss for you after you use it, so you can get more shots off in a shorter period of time if you shoot the Cannon in the middle. But for the sake of how this build plays, I do think that the Vines would be a better ultimate. That long duration route will help you set up really nasty Blunderbuss combos that your opponent won't be able to avoid. And outside of that, it is kind of tough to set those Blunderbuss combos with this build. It's a lot about that kind of watching your opponent and dropping the combo when they put themselves in a spot where you can hit them with it. But yeah, it's up to the user again, but I would recommend trying Vines here or even Stone Form if you want a more defensive option. Now let's take a look at the Masteries, starting off with the Rapier. This is the standard Rapier tree I love to run. Flourish and Finish, Evade, and Flesh. Not taking the last two points in Flourish and Finish because these are only really useful if you're running Tondo or the Flurry for the Bleed. Um, evade, of course, you want to take them all. Very powerful. And then Flesh, a fantastic finisher slash gap closer. Flourish and Finish in general, I really like though because Rapier doesn't have a ton of reach and this gives it a lot more reach. Uh, yeah, really nice for that. And then for the passives, of course, we've gone for Refreshing Strikes on Guard. Um, refreshing Strikes is really nice. That will proc the additional cooldown on your dots too. And uh, On Guard for the damage. Uh, Desperation again for damage. And then Controlled Breathing, an absolute must-have passive for a Rapier. And then Red Curtains for that to reduce cooldown again. I really like Swiftness too. Rapier can generate quite a lot of haste if you just keep hitting them with this... Uh, with your light attack chain. And then last but not least, momentum for that additional damage. This is the big boy for evades burst as well. And then taking a look at the blunderbuss tree. So I tried a few different things with the blunderbuss, but this was what I ended up landing on, um, mostly because this is the best burst kit. This also offers a lot less utility. So you could definitely swap in something like claw shot or even blast shot if you wanna have a little bit more utility or survivability on the build. 
Now, net shot, fantastic for that snare. It is a brutal long distance snare. I believe 50% slow, absolutely disgusting. And the damage from this is not bad at all. Pretty decent damage over time. And then taking a look at the next skill, Azoth Shrapnel Blast. This is Crazy Burst. You can cancel this right after your light attack. So yeah, this allows you to put a lot of additional power in and the Blunderbuss on this build does pretty respectable damage. You can definitely burst someone for uh, 7k plus damage if you land the full combo with the Splitting Grenade as well. And then the Splitting Grenade. I was up in the air about whether I wanted to use this or not. It has an incredibly long cooldown, but the combo with Blunderbuss that makes it so good is that Light Attack, Splitting Grenade, Light Attack into the Shrapnel Blast. You can cancel it all very fast, and that's going to be that 7k damage against a Squishy that could just outright kill them from full health. So, yeah, I, I really like that combination damage-wise, but again, could go for Blast Shot or Claw Shot if you wanted more utility. Uh, future endeavors for that Stamina Restore uh, per pellet hit. Stam Sustain is huge in PvP, so you got to have it. Uh, future planning, not crazy important, but the cooldown reduction is nice. Run and gun gives you that additional speed when you reload. I think that's important as well. And then uh, increased damage after the reload as well from ramp. Deep load, so your last shot does even more damage. And this pair is really nice again with that combo because you'll be landing that last shot into the shrapnel blast. And last but not least, you got to have that unload passive or ultimate passive so that after using an ability, you will have eight pellets instead of six again playing into that big combination damage as well and there you go guys that is the build okay let's get into that pvp commentary i have got one long fight and one shorter fight for you guys in this video starting off with the first fight some open world pvp and brimstone sands and i run into a few yellow players i start engaging with the first player Notice that the uh, Greatsword and Sword and Shield player is coming out on top of me too, and I very quickly try to get a combo into him, but I realize that he is running that Grit from the 300 Con, so I am not going to be able to land those Flourish and Finish super clean on him. Either way, I see a third player come out, and he looks like a healer, so I'm going to retreat back to this kind of piece of terrain here. Uh, this build is very mobile, and you can bounce around a lot thanks to the uh, net shot and the evade slash flesh flourish and finish combo. There's a lot of mobility skills on this build, so in this kind of a fight here, this is a great piece of terrain for me to work with. You can see that the rocks are actually LOSing quite a bit of damage from the other two players, um, preventing them from really getting any range damage in. And especially as a light armor build, I think it's very important to be aware of how you are LOSing those ranged attacks because you're pretty squishy in light armor. So you definitely don't want to be eating those attacks if you can avoid them. And uh, I try to put a bit of pressure into healer as he got a little aggressive there, but then he throws his circle down and starts camping inside of it. And yeah, a lot of one touch movement here. This is actually a really good way to play this build. And I think rapier in general, but blunderbuss pairs nicely for that. Really kind of quick moving around, quick attacks, not committing to trying to land a long lengthy combo or anything like that, but instead poke, 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 and then you roll and you're out of there. And you can see how quickly we can put some nice damage into these guys when we connect those combos. And uh, there I went for the flesh, unfortunately ended up missing almost everything. And yeah, back behind the fire here, again, nice LOS from the ranged attack. I get good damage into the Sword and Board player with the initial shot there, but he does hit me with the hard stun. I end up managing to roll out of it, and uh, yeah, these guys, again, being very hard pressure. Something that I do in this fight, too, is there's a lot of direction change. If you try to kite players and you're always running in one direction, they will kill you. That's just how it is. You have to constantly change directions. And you can see how I'm forcing the movement of this fight by constantly going through the middle and forcing them to turn around. It might seem a little counterintuitive at first, but that turnaround takes time for them to do, and they're not going to accurately hit you with things like ranged attacks when they have to spin like that. So that's a big thing with this kind of playstyle. You're constantly in and out and you're popping around. You're not running away from your opponent, but you're definitely using that movement to help split the fight up and help you control the flow of battle. Because if, like I said earlier, if you just have your opponent charging directly at you and you run in one static direction away, they will kill you. They'll kill you with ranged attacks. They'll kill you with their melee attacks. It's so easy for them to stick to you, especially with that snare attached to the end of melee attacks and sword and shield in particular, putting that snare on the end of its melee attack. In this particular fight, I am very conscientious of the sword and shield player because he is going to be a death sentence just like that. See how he starts landing those cripples and I ended up dodging the end of the cripple uh, or the end of his light attack chain 
That would have been so deadly. And there's a good move from the Blunderbuss just pushing me away from that guy's explosive ultimate right away. And uh, again, just lots of direction changing. I go in for the poke, back out again, come back around the corner. And lots of uh, looking for the right target here. I jump on top of the healer, seeing that he's kind of split away from the rest of the group. But yeah, these guys are these guys are right on my tail. So this is a tricky fight, and the healer is just camping those heals as well. And yeah, the blunderbuss unfortunately is not a fantastic ranged weapon. It's good up close. It has great burst damage, but I'm unable to put any pressure into the healer when he backs away like that. So that is definitely not fantastic. And it looks like the healer actually got tired. I survived long enough and I tanked it out. He seems to be running off in the other direction. I run towards him because I want to try to catch him from the rest of the group. But as soon as I head there, he heads back towards his friends and... Yeah, I'm gonna do my best to keep the pressure on these guys. I know that uh, I know that they are slowly losing the attention of the healer here. Look, he's standing in his circle in the back, and this is perfect for me. This gives me a good opportunity to get some real damage in that they cannot very quickly heal away. And I just start feeding them the blunderbuss. That guy eats two shots right to the face, and you can see he's at half health. Blunderbuss doing some nice damage just with the light attack there. I get the flourish and finish. Do land a nice clean combo. And I try to finish him with the Blunderbuss there. Unfortunately, he gets to the potion just in time. Not enough damage on my uh, on my shot there to actually get the kill. And he jumps into the ice rune to tank that out. And I made a pretty critical error here. Letting my stam go down with the sword and shield player on my tail. He is tanky, but yeah, you don't want to get caught in that snare. I definitely get lucky that my rolls break enough distance that I'm okay. There's the hard stun from the sword and shield player. I'm able to break out of it early thanks to freedom. I've heard that there's a bug in the game right now where you can't break that stun early enough, but maybe he just doesn't, doesn't have the last perk in his ability. I'm not sure, but it let me out just fine. And again, I take a lot of pressure. They hit me with the hard stun. My, uh, my stamina is down, and I'm forced to use my flesh defensively to escape. But you can see here, without the healer, the attrition damage from the blunderbuss and the rapier is really doing work. I'm very slowly whittling these guys down, and now the tank is in a tough spot. He's got his block up. He can't do his heal when he's got his block up like that, because I will get the finishing blow and a quick backstab to finish him off. Then I jump on top of the Ice Gauntlet player here, and we're going to put the pressure into this guy. Um, Ice Gauntlet and Blunderbuss. He actually retaliates with a nasty combo right in my face as I hit him too. Both of us taking quite a lot of damage, but uh, looks like I got the better of that exchange a little bit. I'm a little bit higher health, and I managed to hit him with that snare from the net shot. That is such a deadly snare. I, I'm not kidding. If you're playing this build in a group and you hit someone with that snare, man... They're stuck and they're gonna get mowed down by your friendlies if you're playing and trying to just chase a single player It's such a good skill for it. And there you see I I don't let this guy escape at all He's not running a crazy fast weapon set, but yeah, he's not gonna get away the next fight here a little bit of OPR for you guys some messy group fighting and uh, Got a little glimpse of this clip in the intro of the video there's uh, their group at the at the spawn here, and I quickly jump on top of this healer. Huge damage off of that light attack, uh, Azoth Blast into light attack. And then I manage to get the flourish and finish right after he chugs his potion. And a beautiful cannon shot. He ends up going down, and I just escape with my life here. Oh my god, I get around the corner. I am playing with my friend Clutch here, and he is playing some healer, and you can see those heals coming in so nice. Um, always in a group fight, nice to have a healer. Uh, but great combo on that player there he tries to jump out of there to escape but i stay on top of him his stam is gassed and i connect those last couple light attacks to finish him off and then the flamethrower guy comes from behind here and starts spitting those flames i very quickly managed to get back behind my cover though i'm going to switch to rapier and that is a nasty combo full heavy attack into the light attack or evade light attack sorry and then the flourish and finish and that guy takes an insane amount of damage but unfortunately these guys are piling up on me and i'm taking more and more pressure and that is going to be it. And that is all the footage I have. One last clip here as I say goodbye. This build was pretty interesting though. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. It's got great mobility, great burst. 
Yeah, definitely a bit of a weird build though, attribute-wise, mixing the blunderbuss and rapier. If you guys enjoyed this, feel free to hit that like button. And of course, if you want to see some written guides from me, I've got a written guide to this build and so many more on my website, pvpnewworld.com. If you want to catch some live gameplay from me, you can always check out my Twitch. There's a link down below for you. And of course, if you have an awesome clip that you want to see in the New World Top 5, you can send that to Christopher at pvpnewworld.com. A quick shout out to our sponsor, ExpressVPN, keeping you safe on the internet and you can get a deal with your first purchase with the link down below. And last but certainly not least, a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Whether you've supported in the past, whether you're supporting now, thank you so much everybody for keeping the show going. And of course, look forward to some more. I think I'm going to be playing some Rapier and Sword and Shield next. Yeah, it's been a while since I've played that and I miss it. I miss it a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Have a good night everybody.